Well, what a wonderful day one of the Australian Easter yearling sales uh, here at Riverside. Uh, let's reflect on uh, 14 big million dollar lots and a lot more with Caroline Sears I've had the pleasure of sitting alongside all day and also Jonathan Darcy, who was knocking down some of the big lots. Uh, Caroline, we've had a wonderful day. The horse flesh has been incredible behind us. Yeah, it's just been outstanding, hasn't it? I think plenty of very, very excited vendors here at Riverside at Warwick Farm in Sydney because we saw so many yearlings achieve well above and beyond what the expectations were. And, of course, the buyers. There's so much excitement, isn't there, Das? As far as what they've bought, because we know that these are the horses that will be the, the stars of the racetrack in the future, and, and that anticipation starts right now for the buyers too. Well, it's been building for a long time, Caroline. Richo, very nice to have yeah. you both here today. But it has. It's been building for, you know, certainly the last couple of months. I mean, people have been looking forward to this sale for some time. And I think, you know, to get there today, you saw the pent-up energy in the ring. And it started pretty early on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, did. lot 12, we sold our first million-dollar lot. And there, you know, three or four lots from the end, we're selling another million-dollar lot. So <laughs> it was there all day. And I think, you know, it ebbed and flowed at times. But there's a lot of money here to be spent on these magnificent yearlings. And it's just great. The vendors have got some great results today. And thank you to Golden Grove Stud who are supporting us for our preview show. There's a lot of things to talk about. Uh, the emergence of the fillies, the strength of the fillies. I'd mentioned $14 million lots, eight colts, six fillies. But we, meant, we saw a lot of fillies getting that three quarters of a million just short of a million as well. Look, Richo, the last um, couple of years has been incredible residual value with the stakes winning fillies from the big families. And so people are thinking this is a really good investment. You know, in the next few years, these fillies will hold their value very, very well. Of course, there's great prize money to one. The fillies can actually run in more races than the Colts because yeah. they can run in the derbies and things like that. And of course, the Colts can't run in the... In the uh, in the Oaks. But no, look, I think we've got um, some outstanding fillies and that's what uh, a lot of investors were looking at today. The ability to be able to you know, buy these top class fillies with really international families. And I think, you know, it was borne out. The amount of studs and the amount of individual owners that were here today looking to invest at the top end fillies, uh, I think it's just a great sign of the health of the industry at the moment. Well, let's crunch the numbers and the numbers are coming through at the moment. Uh, 76% clearance rate. Now, I know that's the area that you and your team start now to go to work on. Oh, for sure, Richo. I mean, last year we cleared 87%, so no, there's a bit of work to be done. But that average is quite stunning. I mean, last year the sale averaged 392,000. Given you know, the uh, current economic conditions here in Australia, to be averaging 411,000 for um, you know, the horses on day one, I think there's some, as I say, there's some work to be done. We'd like to see uh, the average come down because that means we've actually sold a few of those horses that have been sold at low, uh, passed in at lower figures. So hopefully by tomorrow morning we'll have that, um, you know, have that clearance rate up over 80%. I'm very confident of that happening because, as I said, there's a lot of people here who have looked at the stock. Uh, the problem being they've, they've got horses on their list for tomorrow and I think once the sale starts tomorrow, they start missing out again. Suddenly, the horses that are passed in today will start to look a little bit more attractive because there's no point coming to Easter and not spending your budget. So yeah. I think, you know, there are some very nice horses passed in today and we look forward to getting them moved over the next 24 hours. I think the mad scramble will be on uh, coming tomorrow, Caroline. <laughs> Let's identify the top lots and they were some breathtaking times. Oh, they certainly were, and really interesting to see, you know, amongst the, the buyers, so many different buyers, and, and success for so many different vendors, Das, as well. The Piero Ennis Hill, of course, are after learning to fly from Coolmore Stud to Mick Wallace and Gandavi. We'll talk about the lot in a minute when we have a look at it. 1.75 million. I am invincible from the great filly in English, of course, going to her trainer, Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott from uh, New Haven um, to Kiora, TFI and Gay and Adrian, 1.55. Snitzel Ballet de Moor, that was the brother to Russian Revolution from Newgate to James Harron at 1.4. Written Tycoon Merrill right at the end of the day there for Frank and Christine Cook. Fantastic to see for 1.4 million from Fairview Park to Yulong Investments. And I am Invincible Heavens Above Yarraman Park to Glentree Thoroughbreds and Badger's Bloodstock 1.35. So tell us about obviously the Piero Ennis Hill. There was so much interest given the deeds of, of learning to fly. Piero, of course, uh, just an outstanding stallion for Cornwall. Here we see this, uh, this yearling in the ring as well. Well, um, and we know, of course, that, um, you know, Coolmore sort of produce these outstanding horses all the time. But to get a horse of that quality uh, by their own Piero and, of course, that 
generational family they've had mean so much to them? Oh, it does. I mean, obviously, a lot of the, uh, the listeners will know that uh, learning to fly, one of the better two-year-olds seen out this year, had a bit of bad luck in the slipper, but she'll be mm. back for races like the 1,000 guineas and things like that. The, this filly's always been a star. Uh, Sebastian, who visits um, Coolmore on several occasions throughout the year, he's come back raving about this filly, saying you know, this family just continues to throw sail-topping yearlings, and we've been fortunate enough to be uh, selling some of the best out of this family for many, many years. And once again, we're just thrilled to see that, you know, five different vendors, five different buyers for the top five lots. It's something that I think the diversification of our top end uh, market has been really, really good to see, Richo. Yeah, and then just, just below them was this flood of money from Yulong, 1.3, mm -hmm. 1.3, 1.3. They have invested so much in Australian racing stock. Yeah. Oh, look, I mean, the colours are well known yeah. around the world, really, Rich. I mean, he's racing horses in Hong Kong. He's racing horses in Europe. He's raced horses in America as well. And now, of course, you know, the investment Mr Zhang and his family have made here in Australian racing, we're, we're thrilled to have him here. Anyone who's been to the, the farm in Victoria knows what the investment's been down there. They stand written tycoon. They stand grunt, of course, you know, the sire of V8. And he, they stand a lot of young stands. I think, you know, he's going to be around for a long, long time. And once again, and the investment in the quality that uh, Mr Zhang is making here is going to you know, see him have tremendous success in the years to come. Yeah, bring it on. And thank you also to the Scone Race Club that are uh, supporting us with our highlight lots. Well, what is it like to spend that sort of money and where will the horse go? Well, let's uh, catch up with uh, Michael Wallace who purchased the $1.75 million filly. Done. A million seven fifty. Yeah, Kulip Singh of Gandabi Racing. Uh, so I purchased the filly for him. Uh, new entrant into, into the business, obviously, uh, looking to build a quality racing and long-term breeding prospect. And obviously, you know, with her credentials, she, she hopefully fits that. Yeah, it's a family I've had some success with previously, uh, with Ocean of Tears, uh, for my brother David. And uh, so, you know, I've, I've followed it closely. It's the family that I probably deem to be the, 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 the most dominant family in Australia currently. And, uh, you know, there, there's so much going on. It's only continued to thrive. Yeah, Annabelle saw us looking at the filly uh, a couple of days ago and, and uh, you know, sort of uh, tapped us on the shoulder and you'd only be too happy to give it to her given uh, learning to fly and uh, you know, hopefully uh, hopefully she can uh, follow in her footsteps. Love being back here, it's, uh, it's great, it's a great atmosphere, a thriving racing community, uh, good to see old friends, so uh, you know, re really enjoyed my week. Great result there. Let's push on to this uh, I'm Invincible cult uh, out of English. We know how brilliant she was. And uh, when we found out, Caroline, who had purchased, we were waiting to see the trainer. And, mate, it's appropriate, isn't it? It's gay. Absolutely. Yeah, of course, New Haven Park. So they've had a wonderful time, of course, with uh, winning with Arts on the weekend. They had Maria Mia win a Galaxy. But this is the, the jewel in the crown, isn't it? English has been their absolute queen, as, as we've heard all along. An outstanding sprinting mare. Her first foal, she earned $3.4 million for the New Haven team and sold to Kiora. So we've seen, obviously, with Kiora, with the Stallions there, Standing, Farn and Captivon and Prague. So, you know, hopefully a new addition with this outstanding looking cult by I Am Invincible from the, the great mayor English. He had great presence, this horse. Mm. And look, give uh, John Kelly and the family their due. Uh, they put a $400,000 reserve. I spoke to John this morning. He was so nervous about this cult really? coming through. Well, I think they raced the mayor and of course they love the mayor. Uh, and I think even just to sell the cult, they were a bit nervous about uh, you know getting him underway. But he said, look, I don't want to see him make five or 600,000, but there was so much interest in him. And I think that was borne out by the price that was paid in the end of the day. But look, he'll go on, I'm sure he's going to win a really big race, that horse. He's got a lot of presence about him, got a beautiful head, and I think it's just great to see those champion race mares produce something that looks as good as that. Goes to a great uh, a great stud in Kiora who have invested a lot of money, and gee, if he can go and make a stay. And look, a few years ago we sold Home, home Affairs yeah. here, and look what happened there. So mm -hmm. this is the sort of horse I think can go and do a similar sort of job. We kicked off in style, didn't we? We, were, we certainly <laughs> hit the ground running. Lot 36, this schnitzel colt for $1.4 million. What did you think of him? Oh, he was a beauty. He's a full brother to Russian Revolution, who's one of the you know the hot young horses in the in the country now. Like Russian Revolution, he's he'll be standing at seventy, eighty, hundred thousand this year. So you invest in these sort of horses, you know, full brother to a proven Group One winner, who's now a very, very promising young sire. Uh, and once again, you have a look at him. He's beautifully marked, and he's the sort of horse that once again. 
if he can go and do it on the racetrack, win a Group 1 race, there's a lot of money to be made out of these young horses, Jase. Yeah, I yeah. totally agree with that. In fact, that, then, that might be cheap. If he wins a Group <laughs> 1, that horse is worth... You know, 20 times that. Well, of course, James Harron buying and uh, Belinda Bateman, uh, you know, involved in, in breeding this horse. We know, of course, they've had a great uh, connection for a long time in partnership with Fergus Doyle and, and really good to see uh, James out with these wonderful clients that have supported him for so long. Look, the stallion market here in Australia is probably as strong as anywhere in the world. So the studs and the agents are buying these horses. It's a ticket in the lottery. There's 30 or 40 tickets a year with, you know, these big stallion pedigrees. They go and win a Group 1 race, be it the Slipper, the Sires, the Coolmore... You know, the, uh, all those yeah. big free odd races. So if they can go and do it, you can't buy those horses. They're 20, 30, 40 million dollars right. off the track. So for the studs, this is where it starts. They're trying to identify horses they think have got the pedigree to make it, the looks to make it, and we're only too happy to provide the marketplace. And then hand it over to the trainer and say, get the job done. Yes. Yes. Like, no, no, yeah. pressure. no pressure at all. No the pressure. trainers love it, but also <laughs> the vendors and the breeders, the emotion that Gemma has done a brilliant job capturing that mm. immediately, and this is a great example. Here's the full relation to the Arrowfield Sprint winner in Splintex. Who's got half a million to start him? You know, you know you've got the right horse the, a day after he's born. And there's a lot of pressure and a lot of stress getting him here. All in one piece, good x-rays, good scope. And then you get the result that the horse deserves. Not so much me, but the horse. 350. 500,000. 600,000. 800,000 at 900,000 at 1 million a million one at 1 million 300,000 done we were hoping he'd make a million but 1.3 is beyond our wildest dreams so you know it's not about the money it's about the horse making what he deserved to make. I'm just so grateful for everyone involved in the horse, but uh, also for his mother, who's a queen. And um, just like to thank Mr. Zhang and Inglis. When a quality individual with a pedigree, you, you've got to front up, and, uh, and we're really pleased to be able to secure him. He's just a lovely, lovely physical, and obviously the mayor's already worked with Schnitzel. Um, you know, Splint X is at start in, in Western Australia, um, and he was. He was just a, a super physical, so uh, really excited to, uh, to have him joining the racing team, and uh, hopefully one day in the stallion barn. Uh, we've had a good look at, uh, at most of the horses on the ground and uh, you know, some lovely horses here and obviously they've got the pedigrees to match them so um, you know, it's, it's a great start to the sale and, uh, and we look forward to the, to the next uh, two days. And that was just one of many examples we could have shown. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it is. I mean, it's the grand final for these breeders. It's such a pressure situation. They've brought these horses to be sold. And they don't know. They honestly don't know where the buck is going to stop at the end of the day. So, you know, 1.3 million. As Ronnie said, you know, he was hopeful this morning of, you know, getting the horse, you know, having a seven-figure colt. You know, the reserve was a lot lower than that. I can tell you the reserve was sort of six or 700,000. So, you know... He's put him on the market, and you just don't know. You just don't know how far they're going to go. So at a million three, I mean, Ronnie has been in that position before. He's, he has topped the sale at Easter before, but he's so emotional. He loves the game so much. You've got a beautiful farm. You know, he and Debbie, uh, his wife, own this beautiful farm outside Toowoomba in Queensland. So it's, um, it's a journey for him, and you know, to get that result for him, I was just thrilled. And, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's great. And it's genuine good for all, the, it's all, good for all the vendors to uh, experience that, uh, that huge thrill. Yeah, talking about a journey, you'll enjoy this journey. We follow the Arrowfield stud staff, and uh, I think this sums up uh, everything that goes into preparing these incredible horses. My name's Mia, um, I've been, I'm a, basically a senior sud hand at Arrowfield. I've been working there for about a year and a half now, um, doing the yearling preps and yeah, I love the yearlings. 
Let's go, partner. So we've arrived this morning. First thing we've got to do is muck out the boxes and walk the horses. Um, we do all 68 of them and then go home and have breakfast. You have long days, early starts, late finishes. This is a job where you need to have a love for the horse and, and a passion and it, it drives you to want to get up in the morning and, and do this for a career. And it's such an exciting and rewarding career. Let's go buddy, morning walks. Come on out. Look, come on. Good boy, come on. Stretch it out. You look in the racetrack. That's what you'll be one day. <laughs> Good boy. Coming in. Good boy. Oh, hi, buddy. How are you going? Thank you. No, come on. Walk. Walk like I know you can. Good boy. Enjoy your breakfast. Having 68 horses to walk in the morning, to get it done in about 40 minutes to an hour is pretty good. Everyone just gets in in the morning, knows what they need to do, gets it done. We're all here for the same goal and everything should run smoothly. Let's go. So after breakfast, we've had breakfast back at the hotel. We come back in in the morning in our uniforms, ready for the day. Uh, we come in straight away, groom these horses, get them looking the best we can, and then start parading whenever clients show up. Oh boy. Yeah, boy. Coming out. The Easter sale is our last big sale and you know it is our grand finale and we bring the best horses here and it's so exciting to see them at the start of the prep and then come through those those months and then see them here and watch them sell it. You, you say goodbye but you're also watching them go into the next stage of racing and watch their journey to see what they do. There's a new place to get racing on tap. All the fast-paced action, the fascinators and fashionistas. See every heart-thumping race live with all three Sky Racing channels, Sky Expert tips, exclusive markets, and a bit of this. This too. Go, you good thing. And naturally, this. All you need to make it happen is this. For racing on tap, download the Tab app. You know the score. Stay in control. Gamble responsibly.
The Vobus system has been so wonderful. It has a number of layers to it, Super Vobus, Vobus Gold, Vobus Size, and now this Size Boost. So there's so much money and prize money on offer to trainers, syndicators, buyers who buy these yearlings. Absolutely outstanding. You know, like you can't speak highly enough of it. We buy it sales interstate. We'll still try and buy a Vobus horse or enrol them in the Vobus scheme if they're not enrolled ourselves. So uh, yeah, it's a massive help. And there's just so much money on offer. It's, you've just got to get in there and get involved, get amongst it. I'm with John Massara, who's been good enough to join me at the conclusion of day one of Easter. John, we're in the beautiful Arrowfield barn here at the complex. Take us through the day for Arrowfield. You've, uh, your top lot for you was the Autumn Sun out of Grizzly, 1.2 million. Yes, that was a thrilling result because uh, the Autumn Sun is beginning to make his mark and people are recognising that now. So I was very pleased to see that. I think there'll be another expensive Autumn Sun tomorrow. So I think you'll end up with a very good average. And you had a, a mon monumental moment for Snitzel today as well. Take us through that one. Yeah, that was his 50th million dollar horse, uh, Snitzel. So that's quite a, a, a hallmark, really. Uh, look, it was a buoyant sale, particularly at the top end. We ended up passing a few horses, particularly towards the end. Uh, I'm reasonably confident we'll get them done tomorrow. But the lower end of the market is, so is soft as has been uh, the hallmark of, of a number of sales this year. And I think uh, that's the result of the tougher economic conditions. And the demand for the quality stock though remains very high, which is always, you know, that's very positive. Very much so. And that's interesting that there's still sort of unlimited money for, you know, the, the good items that people want. And there's great demand for fillies. Well, yeah. Does it cost you an average of 400000 Was that sale? our best ever for day one of the Easter sale. Yeah, I'm impressed with the average and, and, and with the median as well. Uh, the clearance, as we know, was lower than normal, but uh, some of that might clear up over the next 24 hours and leave us with a pretty good result at the end. It's amazing, you have 68 horses in the sale this year. It's a huge draft, isn't it? I mean, you have such great dedicated staff. We had a story go out today and in the preview show of one of your staff members here and how early they get up to parade and get the horses ready. Oh, it's a marathon, really, uh, for, <laughs> for the staff. And they've done a wonderful job. I'm proud of them all. And uh, look, uh, the horses look well. People remarked on how well the horses looked and uh, they behaved well. And uh, we're halfway through, but... Uh, you know, we can see the end in sight. How many tomorrow? I think we've got 38 tomorrow. Right, 38. Yeah. It's only half, you're only halfway. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you love this sale, don't you? I mean, it's, been a, it's a sale that you've had a lot to do with for a long time. We're now at the new complex out here, but it has that, um, that history and that legacy that comes with it, that prestige. Oh yeah, very nice sale. And uh, the facilities are excellent. And we've sold some great horses through this, uh, through this sale. And, uh, I've got a good feeling about it. I understand where the buyers come from here and, uh, and I'm comfortable selling uh, at the English Easter sale every year. Great to chat to you, John. Thank you so much for your time and best of luck for the Arrowfield team tomorrow, day two. Thanks very much. Cheers. Absolutely brilliant to catch up with John Massara, Australian Racing Hall of Fame member, Say No More. And also thank you to Golden Grove Stud for all, the, all their great support. Now let's mention the elephant in the room, Darcy. It has been noted that the million dollar lots appear to be going to you. That have is you nice, no. have you flexed your muscles this year after those young punks were getting all the million dollar lots? No, Jace, that's not the case. In fact, I think Brett Gildy might have got me in the end. I, Did he? I had him early on, but no, he, he came with a rush late. Oh, but no. there's another day to fight on. The old dog's got some wag left in the tail. Oh, so is the old dog planned a big day tomorrow for, for you? There are some nice horses there. I'm not going to get ahead of the game. But no, I know Rusty's got a couple of nice horses to sell tomorrow as well oh, so okay. no at the end of the day it all goes into the same pot Jason and we're just delighted if we can get a good result for our vendors that's what makes us happy. And I know you hate uh, predicting anything can you see something topping the 1.75? Look I don't look personally I don't see it but I see plenty of nice horses making 800 to a million two million three you million four you know I, I think John Vassar mentioned there there's a, a beautiful filly it's actually not in his draft it's actually in the, the draft of Silverdale out of right. Via Africa the, the um, yeah the, the half beautiful. two in the Congo so she's a magnificent filly I th I'm sure she's going to sell well but there's a host of good horses and look the buyers are here they've done all the work so we're just looking forward to you know, getting amongst it again tomorrow and, and hopefully seeing everyone leave with a smile on their face whether you're a buyer whether you're a breeder and look particularly all the 
those kids who have, who have slaved away mm. for months on end. You know, that was saw. a lovely story from, yeah. from, uh, with Mia from Arrowfield. And look, that's been repeated by, you know, from all the different vendors that have brought horses here. Some of the vendors have fold their horses down, have seen them, you know, have their first drink of milk and, you know, here they are selling them. So it's, a, it's an emotional time. There's a great attachment that's formed between strapper and horse and it's great to see, you know, come to fruition now and then they go and cheer them on the racetrack. Great stuff for beauty is, Carol, and we get to do it again tomorrow. We do, and it's just outstanding. If you if you didn't manage to tune in until late in the day, make sure you join us from early in the morning, 9.30am Sydney time, to have the, the preview and hear about the highlight lots because there's nothing more exciting than seeing those top lots going through, and even the lower prices as well. When when a vendor has, has exceeded their expectations, the joy is just absolutely palpable. It's wonderful. It's going to be great fun. Good luck. Uh, rest up. Rest the tonsils. <laughs> we look forward to a wonderful show tomorrow. We'll have have a preview show at 9.30 tomorrow and then into our first lot at 10.